Proverbs. She want to say Psalms. Proverbs chapter 14 and 19. Yeah, 19. The evil bow before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. The poor is hated even of his own neighbor. You know, what's he can? What can he do for me? He's just as poor as we are. Because you got the but, the rich have many friends, and they got money. And they're not really friends, you know. You get the the uh, the prodigal son. He had a lot of friends when he had money. Luke fifteen fourteen. Money will get you a big crowd of people. If you're poor, you don't have to worry about a lot of people being around you. Do they not err? Or err that despise evil? Yes, they do. We've been seeing that all along. James 1.15 for devising evil. But. Another but. Mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. So error is to those that devise evil. Mercy and truth. To those that devise good. No, it's mercy and truth. The more truth you get. God gives you more of him who is truth. For by doing good. But. You can't say for a man who does not know God. Oh, I'm doing good because he doesn't know God. You can't know God and not have the Spirit of God. And that Spirit only comes by being saved, born again. If you don't have the Spirit of God in you, the Bible says there is none good. How can you be good not being saved when Jesus said your father is, a, is Satan? John 8, 44. The liar, the murderer. Wait. If you're saved, your father is God who giveth life, who is all true. Listen, the only good we do is, is the good that we do through Jesus Christ. You imagine if evolution was true. Now, let's think about this. Evolution is doggy, dog, doggy, eat doggy. Just for myself. Survival of the fittest. You take evolution without God. Okay? According to what the Bible says, God is love. Where would love be in evolution? Do you realize if evolution is true and the Bible is wrong, There'd be people dying by the by the masses in, in high schools today. It is me that deserves the A. It is me that deserves that career. And their way of getting things by would be killing and, and maiming and getting rid of. Listen, if a monkey goes steals a monkey's tree, he, he's gonna battle it out. You got animals in the animal kingdom that will battle out for the female, for the mating that one season. It is the conscience that God has given man that puts restrictions on him. It is the love of God. If there was no God in all evolution, there would be no good impossible you know the little fish is eaten by the bigger fish which is eaten by the biggest fish which is you know you take the lives of Christians 
who have been put into torture, who has been put into death, and where they will take the captives and say, listen, take this person, they're younger in the Lord. Take this person. This person is unsaved. He will die and go to hell. Take me. That's not in the world of evolution. Evolution is me first. Me the top. Do you realize what Adolf Hitler would have done if he killed every Jew? Let's say it was possible. Let's say the Jews are not God's people for the illustration. You know what he would have done when he killed every Jew? He would go gone after the English and kill them all. He would go after the Spaniards and kill them all. And when he's killed the whole entire world, he would kill his own Germans, his own Nazis, to be left the only one. And then his children would try to kill him. You see this verse here. He, uh, he that despises his neighbor sinneth. That's evolution. I don't care about you. You make me look bad. I can't use you for what I need you for. But he that has mercy on the poor, happy is he. That's God. Happy, blessed. Do they not err, or err, however you want to say it, devise evil? There's evolution. But mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. There's God. If evolution was true and you could, you could believe it, there would be only a very few master race of people on this planet by today. Where are the giants? Shouldn't just natural selection say that the giants should be the ones living today? Yep, a little Jewish boy killed one of them. A bunch of Jewish men and armies in the Bible record that they were killed by them. Was, uh, Goliath's brother was killed by a Jew. So we see the the by these two verses we see evolution versus God and God wins you couldn't have a husband and wife because one of them will be to get the other there'd be no love I'll go, go on Verse 23, in all labor, there is profit. According to the Bible, there's no profit, there's no labor. Now, this is written in the Bible, right? This is God's word, right? If this is the Holy Bible, right, and we're going to face the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment for every male and female, right? What if you stand at either judgment, saved or lost, you have a profit and there is no labor, what will be your outcome? Now the other only Bible proper ways of making money would be an inheritance or the blessing of the first son, the father placing the blessing of the children. Imagine going up to God as a saved Christian. All right. The angels open up the books. How much money did he make a lifetime? I'm just going to give a number, a million dollars. I know it. All right, let's say he made a million dollars a lifetime. How did he make it? Oh, he put a dollar down, scratched off a card, and, and that's how he made a million. You mean just by, a labor is just by taking a coin and scratching off? That's not labor. Try to compare that to a, to a Christian, I'm talking about Christians, who stand before the judgment seat of Christ and say, how much did he make? He made $5 million, Lord. Well, how did he make it? Well, he was a carpenter and he had his own business 
he had to take care of employees, and you know, some employees stole from him. Some, you know, didn't show up to work, and and you know, some of the stuff he bought was bad, and some stuff was good, and some customers liked the stuff he did, some customers didn't. Like, and he just go, that's labor. You know, when we read about the parable of the sower, he went out and sold. He didn't pay people to do it for him. You know, there was a thing in this country when you were dead, poor, in the ghettos, wherever you want to call the place. You were in filth. And you worked your way up. And there were even stories of brothers and sisters that would help. Raise up one child in the family to go to school, which no one else could, that they can go and be somebody and help the rest of her kin or his kin. But today in America, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to point out in America, you can get a profit and not have labor. And you're going to stand before God and you're going to have to give an account the one that got the money and the one that gave the money. And there are some people who labor more and get less. Listen, even the ones in, in, in the vineyard got, they got their penny. Everybody got their penny for the same amount of work. There are people who get paid today outrageously for doing absolutely nothing. I had a lawyer one time I had to get, thanks to the government, $400 an hour. Who is worth $400 an hour? To have me sign a paper that I had to sign and for her to, to, to do her, her notarize or whatever you want to call it for $400 an hour. By the way, which is called probate. I had to do it. That's an outrageous fee. One hour, you can, for two or three hours, you could pay for the rent in the place for an entire month and, you know, all the, the Coke machines. And but the talk of the lips tendeth only to punery. Galatians 6 7. Talk is cheap. Well, I'm going to start a business one day. I'm going to have these people, and we're going to locate here. This is what we're going to do. And then you just talk, and you don't do. You know, if you were, if you wanted a book to write, a true, honest book that you could write as a born again Christian and probably make a lot of money, talk to. I don't know if there's a specific department, but go down to the bank and talk to all those retired and today who are active. Talk to all those who have to sit behind a desk and listen to people explain their wild ideas about how they need the bank to give them money. I guarantee that would be an interesting book with all the stories. All the inventions, ideas, all, you know, we're going to build, whatever, all the stuff, the business, the house, the personal loans, the, the cars, and whatever. If you were to take the notes from all those people that, that worked in the bank and, and then write that, that out into a book, it'd be a very interesting book. And you would put, you know what you would put for the title? Here's what you would put the title. But the talk of the lips tendeth only to use it. Talk is cheap. Now some ideas probably worked out, but I guarantee many did not. And maybe the bank even had to foreclose on those ideas. You know what a Christian is? He's a laborer. He's not a sitter. He's not a couch potato. It's not, a, oh, I will go pass out tracks, or I will go knocking on doors, or I will hold a sign. No, it's doing. Be ye doers of the words, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves.
Dark is cheap. Back, it was back your walk with your talk or talk your walk or something like that. Be action. Just don't say you are. Listen, the Bible says in, in Matthew 12, you'll be counted for every idle word that you've spoken. An idle word here would be, oh, I'm going to do it and you don't. That would be an idle word. You know, if, if I told you go out and start the car and leave it idling for me, that doesn't mean it's going down the road. That means it's running in park. It's not going anywhere. We got a lot of idle Christians say they're going to do. I'll, or you got these lost people. Oh, I'll get saved later. Once I get older, I have sold my wild oaks. The crown of the wise is their riches. Well, I'm going to get a crown from the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to use, I'm going to have that crown for all eternity. This is a crown that will not last long. Once the earth burns up. But yet, in the verse, it's a crown. Look what I got. But the foolishness of fools is folly. Now look at the three. Foolishness, fall, fools, and folly. Folly is, is, is foolishness. Folly is 37 times. This is a real fool. Not only is he a fool, but he's got the foolishness of a fool, which results is folly. Nothing. Waste. A true witness delivers souls. That's a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. Souls. That part of you that's eternal. So if you want to be a true witness, you don't become a Jehovah witness. I'm a true witness because I go out and try to deliver souls. I don't try to damn them. I don't try to deceive them if you were to pick up on our second John study. I try to show people Jesus Christ who is God and God is Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our salvation. But a deceitful witness, and pick that up with, with my second John study I did today. A deceitful witness speaketh lies. What is deceit? There's the definition in the Bible in the same verse. He's a liar. And they were out by the droves when it came to Jesus' trial before the Sanhedrin. You know, those people that saw what Jesus did that we believe by faith, those people who saw Jesus, I haven't even seen Jesus yet. Walked into the Jewish council and said, yeah, I'll lie against him. Because the Bible says they were false witnesses and they could not, they were false witnesses. What does the Bible say they were in scripture? A deceitful witness because they spoke, they spoke lies. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Now that does not sound right. I've got fear, but I got strong confidence. Explain that one to a psychiatrist. First John five thirteen. When you got God on your side and you're fearing God 
loving him. That doesn't mean it means I don't want to sin. It means I don't want to offend my God that loves me. And I love him. And with that fear, listen, in prayer and fellowship and Bible reading and going to church and doing what God has told you to do, look, man, you can do it. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. When I do what God has told me about giving. See, I can't take the verse and just throw it out there and use it. I've got to give like the Lord wants me to do, then I can do all things. See, once I can master giving to the Lord, I'm not going to have a carnal attitude when it comes to asking the Lord. If I can give to others, not grudgingly, but lovingly, my prayer life is going to be helping others. And if I can help others by God, then I know God's going to help me. Now, I'm talking about give $10 and God's going to give you $10,000. And there's no but here. And his children shall have a place of refuge. Do you know anybody who's saved and has lost children? So that's but if you fear the Lord and you do right and if your children want to do right they know where to run to by your fear as guidance free will man yeah yeah or nay your fear in the Lord and your confidence in serving him may bring your children to the refuge now when you go to the kings of Israel there were some wonderful kings that had some rotten sons and there were some Wonderful son, I'm um, kings that had. Yeah. There were some kings that had that, that that were rotten, and they had good sons. Get this right. And there were some good kings who had some rotten sons. And there were some kings that were rotten, and they repented and got right back to. And what would the Bible say? They would walk in the way of David, their father, which would be their great, 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 great grandfather. David set an example for, for his children way away from, from his generation. Not only did he set the way for Solomon, but he set the way for all the kings of Israel. And some of his children went into the refuge, great, 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 and some did not. And yet those that did, well, is recorded, walked in the way of David, their father. If the Lord is tarried, or if you have grandchildren or great-grandchildren, can it be said by your life what they're doing? They walked in the way of their father and put your name there if it's applicable. You know, there is many a man today who's in the ministry or who's saved doing something for the Lord of a mother that prayed years and years. While that child lumbered and stumbled and, and made a mess of his life over the prayers of his mother. But falling from her life, her prayers, he came to the place of refuge. 
and fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. Jesus said, I am the water of life. A fountain brings its piped fresh water. I don't know. Maybe there is. You can tell me. As far as I know, every fountain I know is fresh water. And they're usually made of stone. It tells you something. The Lord Jesus Christ, that rock, that rock that followed him was Christ. They gave him water in the wilderness. I've never yet to see a wooden fountain. I have not yet to seen a clay fountain. To depart from the snares of death. Do you want victory over death? Then you need to come to the fountain. You need to drink of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way of life. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's plain and simple. In the multitude of people is the king's honor. When the population is on your side, that's honor. Now, some people don't like it, but there are people who are honoring our president. There are multitudes. He won two elections. Even some of the dead people liked him. They voted for him twice. That's what I'm told. But I guess you're right as far as voting. The multitude of those that say, yay, you get the president's honor. So don't gripe and complain. The multitude spoke. But in the want of the people is the destruction of the prince. Now he's he's not the ruler of the nation. He's under. And when the people want, 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 want. That's the destruction. Because it gets to the point that the government cannot hand out. We are in a need of this country right now. There are wants that the government cannot give you. They can give you a, they can give you a check. Yes, they can. But on a bank account that's a trillion dollars in debt? They can't give you a job that's not here. He that is slow to wrath, and we saw this in verse 17, is of great understanding. So God is slow to wrath. He's long-suffering. You know, the greatest example is the wilderness journey of Israel. God wasn't soon angry because he would listen to Moses and repent. You know who in the Bible was soon angry? And wasn't slow to wrath? Moses. He killed a man. And buried his body. He went up to that rock and smote it twice. In anger. And he didn't get to go in the promised land. 
until Jesus was there. But he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly, foolishness. Kind of a patience thing. Mellow down, mellow out, sit, sit it out. Take a nap. Come to it with fresh. A sound heart, healthy, right, is the life of the flesh. Jesus said the blood was the life, I believe, of the flesh. But he said the blood was the life. The heart pumps the blood. So this is your organ. The Bible it does speak about the heart as an organ. And here's a word we're picking up now in Proverbs. Envy the rottenness of the bone. Envy can cause Alzheimer's. I'm not uh, arthritis. It can cause problems in your bones. Sin affects your health. Exodus 15:26, Job 5:2, and 1 Corinthians 11:30. Worry destroys you. Anger destroys you. Listen, I don't think as the, what the, little the Bible tells us about Anna, I don't think she had high blood pressure. She was at the temple praying and fasting night and day for the people. I guarantee Caiaphas would have probably had a high blood pressure. Especially every time he heard the name Jesus. Pilate had a worry problem. Especially when his wife walked into the into the room and said, Honey, don't have anything to do with that just man. Guilt caused Judas to go and hang himself. When you sin, it is a trouble to your health. It is something to tell you inside your body like a rattlesnake when he's rattling his tail. Beware. Take caution. When the doctor tells you you got high blood pressure, there's something wrong in your body. God has given us a nervous system in our body to say, hey! It's like that, that those idiot lights in your car dashboard. Something's wrong! And when it comes to sin and conscience, God will give stuff in our body to say, Hey, you're doing wrong. Repent and get right. And this condition will level itself out. Don't get into envy. and We'll see envy later. You know, Pilate said as a testimony written in the Gospels, that is why that the chief priest brought Jesus to his judgment, because they envied him. Today, a man goes to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ as his Savior. That wasn't true in the Gospels. Christ had not died. What is the sin that would put those men, the Sanhedrin, into hell for eternity? Pilate said, envy. 
What a thing to burn in hell for all eternity. Because Jesus got the crowds. Because people followed Jesus. Because Jesus, the leper men, the leprous men would come to the priest and say, Hi, how you doing? Well, yeah, how you doing? I'm Samuel. Yeah, so Samuel for what? I'm the guy that sat outside the gate. Yeah, so what? Wait a minute. You're not that Samuel that was a leper, were you? Yes, I was. Wait a minute. Let's see your potentials. What was that blind guy in, in uh, John chapter 7, is it? They wanted, they brought the guy's parents? Let's see your credentials. Because you're not only the first leper that came to us saying, well, I'm healed. This has never happened before. And it didn't happen by us. Read me one time where that where the fair uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, and other morons. Read me one time. Show me the passage, the, the chapter, and the verse where they were happy that Jesus healed somebody. A woman comes over. She's bent over. Jesus healed her. He was a shepherd day. Yeah, but don't you take your ass and feed them? Don't you take a cow out of a, out of a pit and all that? Envy is never like pride, never of God. And when you get envy in you, you've got trouble. You need to get off alone by God and your Bible and prayer. I mean, take a vacation somewhere alone without the family. Get into a room, get into a place, get yourself naked, get yourself alone with God, and don't leave until you get that envy solved. Because you can tear up a church. You can tear up a marriage. You can tear up your family. You can tear up your own life. It tore up a nation. The scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, and the high priests told the nation, got them in a riotous scene to say, crucify him. Those were the same people that said, Hosanna. Envy turned an entire nation against Jesus Christ. It will destroy your church and your family. And it will tear you up. You might as well have been that guy who, who's living in the tombs naked with, with, with the devils in him, the legion. I call it spiritual heartburn. Hell's a fire burning inside you. He that oppresseth the poor reproaches. Ecclesiastes 5.18 His capital M maker. You oppress the, the truly the poor and God looks to it. Now there are poor people because you know what? Stupid choices. But Jesus said, the poor you're going to have always with you. And you got to rightly divide who really needs help and who doesn't. Listen, just because a person is outside of a big supermarket chain store saying, well, I need money, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a vet, and, and, you know, we're homeless, and you give her five, you know, you give, oh, I'll give you five dollars. And you follow that person around a couple corners and, you know, he takes off his, his Halloween costume saw and gets into a Mercedes Benz and drives off. It happens. And it makes those who really need help unable to get it. But... He that honors him. Now, who do you think the him is? Do you think it's the poor or the maker? Read the verse. Honors him, has mercy on the poor. 
He that honoreth God has mercy on the poor. That's what it says. Oh, I love the Lord. You, you ever try to help anybody who's poor? Those people? Ew. I give them my socks and my shoes after I warm and I buy a new pair every day. You don't honor God. You got a religion. Well, what do you do for the poor? I'll tell you what I do for the poor. I give them the gospel. I tell them about Jesus Christ. In that case, all men are poor, no matter how much bank account you have or don't have. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. Simple. But the righteous have hope in his death. Luke 16. A wicked man will go further into wickedness while the righteous, hey, I'm going to die one day and be with the Lord. Now, back to verse 31 real quick. Proverbs 30, verse 8, and Luke 4, 17. I don't know if I gave those references. Verse 33. Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that has understanding. God's understanding. But that which is in the midst of fools is made known. A fool will, will reveal that he's a fool. A man that has God's wisdom will reveal he has God's wisdom. A fool will get up there and say, well, see, we came from apes and monkeys in the Big Bang. That's a fool. A Christian, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. A fool will say, here, eat some bread. Well, I get to drink the wine. A wise man will say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ from what I will show you in the Bible, and thou shalt be saved. A fool will say, eh, just let your children go. They'll, they'll work themselves out. A righteous man will rob them be times. Wisdom rests in the heart of him that has understanding, but that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Ah, here we go with this verse. Righteousness, God, Exalteth a nation. America is exalted. Do you think she's exalted because of God? When you tell him to get out of the schools, you just had some guy last night, I think it was, just run over a Ten Commandment monument somewhere and drove off. But sin, but, but sin is a reproach to any people, none in America. They advertise it on a billboard. There's a restaurant where we go downtown to preach, and those girls, they, they have shorty short shorts. It's so disgusting. And when my wife and I want to go down to watch the sunrise and be together as a husband and wife and, and see the beauty of God, we're, and we're coming home, and we got to see that same big, big billboard of a prostitute selling her body. And then you go down a little bit away, and there's, a, there's the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. And then, you know, uh, there, there's one for a gun show, and then there's one for booze, and there's one for, you know, used car place, and then there's one for liquor. And there, I mean, there are more billboards for sin than there is for God. That's what I'm trying to say. And you're going to say righteousness exalts America? Check your yellow pages on how many package stores there are compared to churches. Check the country and find out how many alcoholics are there in America compared to how many people are a member of any church. 
And some of those alcoholics are a member of a church. Huh? Even that adulterous woman that we read a few chapters ago in Proverbs, even I paid my free I paid my vows. She was religious. We were in a church with a woman that did turn tricks. And she got a John chapter 6 out of it. Not the soul, the belly. As far as 34, you got Psalms 33, 12. I hope that is. Can't read my own writing. My writing is getting so small. Somebody shrinking dink my, my notes in my Bible. Second Chronicles 17, 10 and Genesis. I see a 12 3 or a 13 3. Scribal, no error in that one. The king's favor is toward the wise servant. Now, you can't say that's America because we have a president. You know, that is, a, that is an illustration of David and Nathan. Nathan was not afraid. But his wrath is against him that causes shame. A couple times men came to David. I believe it was three men, two different times. Hey, you know, David, I killed your enemy Saul. And David said, you know what? That's a sin. You killed the Lord's anointed. You're going to die. Then there was two men, Ishbadish. They killed the guy and beheaded him while he was sleeping in bed. Come on. How more Muslim can you get? I'm, I didn't say that. Uh, you know, they came to David with the guy's head. Well, we killed your enemy. Well, he wasn't David's enemy. As far as David carries, he's just, you know, he upstripped authority. David's like, Lord will take care of it. And he hung them up. After he after he had them killed, shame. The king's favor is toward the wise servant. God will show you favor. We talked about that with the Luke. All right, but his wrath is against him that causes shame. Why did Adam hide? And what was the result of God upon Adam? Wasn't there curses? The wrath of God upon those who do not receive Christ as their Savior, as they are cast off for all eternity in the lake of fire. And God doesn't even give them any clothes. I mean, after all, they put him on the cross naked. For six hours, he casts them off into an eternity, into the lake of fire, no clothes for all eternity. You know what the Bible says about the Christian in New Jerusalem? Fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. We will be wearing clothes. How you like that? And we'll close there. Another chapter done. Proverbs 14 is done.